Facebook is asking for more help with their fact checking. So they've added checkyourfact.com, which is a subsidiary of the Daily Caller and another group called Science F Feedback to their fact checking group. Now, this has had the help of Pointer's International Fact Checking Network Board when it comes to adding credible, and I say that credible, fact checkers. But Facebook's fact checking mission is raising eyebrows considering the amount of power this one company has in the news and media industry. Add this news with the announcement that Facebook's new chief lawyer helped write the Patriot Act. And there is a lot to talk about, which is why I bring in investigative journalist Ben Swan. Ben, thank you so much for coming on with us about this. Yeah, Scotty, thank you for having me on. It's a very important subject. It's interesting when the fact checkers need to be fact, and I still go back to there's no such thing as facts, it seems like, anymore. I'll say that again. So, no. Ben, tell us about the news of Facebook's fact checkers being associated closely with the State Department of all people. Yeah, so the State Department is one of the organizations that funds this Pointer Institute, which essentially is the d decision maker as to who was a legitimate fact checker on Facebook. And even that alone, Scotty, is such a, a strange statement that there is an organization that has been tasked now with deciding who is able to accurately decide what is fake news. That's essentially what they're doing. Of course, the problem here is that Pointer is funded by uh, George Soros and his Open Society Foundation, Pierre Odemayar, uh, and his foundation, uh, both of them heavily involved in geopolitics, and of course, other organizations, including the U.S. State Department, which then, of course, would raise the question, would the State Department be funding an organization that fact checks and agrees to fact checkers who are critical of the State Department? It's doubtful. Well, and that's, I mean, I hear everything you're saying makes me think of the word propaganda under the name, under the title of yep. fact checkers, and that's very scary to me. And also, you couple us with the growing censorship on Facebook. So is this going to, we thought we might be seeing a call since we put the spotlight on it with Congress, and everybody's been talking about it, but is this actually showing an indication that there's going to be growing censorship, or is this some sort of way of establishing a protocol to deal with possibly false or what is truly fake news being put out there? <laughs> well, first of all, uh, let me answer the second part first. So it can't deal with fake news when some of the considered legitimate news organizations that Pointer would say are legitimate are CNN and BuzzFeed. Because CNN yeah. and BuzzFeed, yes, they do legitimate work sometimes, but they do a lot of junk work as well. And we know that BuzzFeed, the, the, the publisher of the Trump dossier should never for all time be allowed to be on any list of a fact checker. Um, and yet this is allowed by uh, Pointer. I want to go back to what you said, though. You use the term propaganda. I think that's exactly the right term. It is not an issue even just of censorship anymore. This is outright propaganda. You should be disqualified from ever being allowed to call yourself a fact checking organization or even a journalism organization if in the United States, if the U.S. government is funding you. You can't be that. If, now, if you want to say we're going to be a fact checker of, of foreign media and the U.S. State Department will, will fund us, that might be something different. But you can't say we're going to sit here and be critical of um, journalists who are online and decide whether they're telling you the truth or not, but we're going to receive money from the U.S. government. If you take money from the U.S. government, you now have a dog in this fight, and so you, you cannot possibly be considered legitimate. Okay, so Ben, we're journalists, so we're used to looking around and looking at different sources, but the, the average person at home, you know, this is what happens, is they see something, they repost it thinking it's true. What do you tell, and I know you get this question a lot, because I get it, what do you tell people that look at you and say, how can I tell what is real or not? Because everybody's saying they're telling the truth and they're pointing all these different fact organizations, <laughs> and then to come to find out it's just being motivized and mobilized to get someone to think the wrong thing. Yeah, it, well, it really is, and it's happening all over the place. Look, number one, you have to take a step back and say, you have to be smarter as, as a consumer of news. If you want to consume news, that means more work on your part today. You have to look at the source information um, that reporters are citing. You have to go back and read it. You cannot just read headlines. I had a friend the other day who came up to me, and he's a smart guy and a very politically savvy guy, um, and he came up to me and he said, wow, you know, that, that Trump-Russia thing, there's a lot there, huh? And I said, well, can you give me more than that? Well, like, what specifically are you asking? And he started in some questions, all of which were incorrect. And I said, where are you getting this information from? And he says, OK, OK, I admit I just read headlines. I don't actually read the stories. Are you kidding? You can't just read headlines. I mean, that just, as, as a consumer of news, if you're going to consume it, you have to go deeper than that. You have to require um, source information be good. It, it is more work on your part, but it should also be the, uh, more work on the part of journalists who do a better job of, of sourcing what we're doing. But 
I got to tell you, you know, when you get these organizations that are trying to make it seem like it's too hard for you to figure out, we'll figure it out for you. They're essentially propagandizing you. You cannot believe those organizations. And that is the first sign right there. If anybody ever tells you, you know what, just take my word for it, it's the truth, they're probably more than likely yeah. not telling you the truth. Uh, last question that I got, I got to throw at you, Ben, on this, on this point of it. Yep. Facebook announced Jennifer Newstead is currently the legal advisor to the yep. state, Mark. She's taking over as the company's chief legal counsel. There are some concerns about her history and how is this going to have effect on just the everyday Facebook user who does look at Facebook to get their news. Yeah, the fact is, we just mentioned Pointer, this fact-checking organization funded by the State Department, and now Facebook hiring a, a legal analyst for the State Department to become their chief legal counsel. It is the, one of the highest positions at Facebook, and this is a person who will, will set a lot of the guidelines for what is allowed to be published on Facebook, what kind of content will be allowed to be there under their terms. This is also a woman who not, not just helped to draft and create the Patriot Act, the single worst, most viol uh, greatest violation of civil rights possibly in U.S. history, but a woman who actually lobbied for it through members of Congress. So it's not a good day uh, for Facebook in terms of, of privacy and transparency. Well, let me just say this. I know I want to tell our viewers, because they're smart enough on their own to go and check out what Ben and I are saying, but I'm pretty sure you'll find out that we're accurate. But hey, make up your own mind. Question more. Thanks for joining That's us, Ben. Right. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.